Great, so thanks for coming. I know it's 6 p.m. Uh, this talk is going to be 19 minutes long, so it's going to be short but intense. Um, if you're in the back, you might not see everything, so you might want to come f from forward a little bit. Uh, so no intro, no agenda for now, let's dive into it. So we're going to talk about CI pipelines and how they authenticate to cloud environments. So uh, when you want to have things like Terraform, deploying things to AWS, you have different ways of, of doing that. The easiest way is to have hard-coded credentials into your pipelines um, that uh, are going to be used to authenticate. Now, the issue with that is that it's the cause for most of the cloud data breaches, and so uh, people try to avoid that very hard. So the next, the next way of doing that is using um, a JSON web token, a GWT that your CI platform gives you. So for GitHub Actions, it just passes it as an, um, to your pipeline, and then you can exchange this for, for cloud credentials. We're going to talk today about a few of these misconfigurations and um, what we found in different places, including being able to compromise an AWS account from the UK government, and we received this as an uh, early cr Christmas gift, which was a very nice surprise. So my name is, uh, is Christophe, I'm French, as you can hear, um, and I live in Switzerland. I've been living there for the last 12 years. Um, I work at Datadog, focusing on uh, open source, uh, cloud security research, and helping make our security product better. So who in the room is familiar with AWS or works with it on a regular basis? Not everyone, but a few people. So a short introduction to a few things that we'll need, but we'll keep it short. So if you forget about AWS, um, the concept of role is usually used to assign some permissions indirectly. So if you have a user and you want to assign it a role, you generally abstract this through, uh, sorry, and you want to assign permissions, you abstract this through a role, right? So you say, I want all my DevOps engineers to have specific permissions, so I give them this role, which is just a set of permissions. Forget that in AWS, a role means something totally different. So I, I just want to clear that out of the way. Um, in AWS, there are two things that you can use to authenticate. So two types of identity that you can use. The first one is I am users and the second one is I am roles. So I am users, it's what you would expect. You have a username, and you can have a password to authenticate to the AWS console, and you can have programmatic credentials to access the API. Um, so you can sign in to the console with your username and password. You can use your um, access key ID, secret key through the CLI, and that's what it is. And the problem with that is that these credentials never expire, and really when you look at cloud data breaches of the past, 10 years, most of them are caused by leaked IAM credentials. So that's why we're going to try to avoid them very hard. Um, and the solution that AWS came up with is IAM roles, and it's basically a credentials vending machine. So um, you give it, you ask, hey, I want to take some credentials for this role, you get back some temporary credentials. And a role has two things, a trust policy, which defines who can get credentials for that role, and a permissions policy, which is what permissions does this role have? So it really looks like this. You say, hey, I want to assume this role. That's the term. You get back some time-bound credentials that expire after at most 12 hours. But obviously, the question is, how, like, who can take credentials for this role, right? So that's where the, the trust policy comes in. Uh, and there are a few use cases. The easy ones are when you are already authenticated in AWS. So if you are a workload, like an EC2 instance, a Lambda function, it's quite easy because you already have an identity in AWS. Um, if you are an IAM user or role, it's also the same. So the tricky part is when you don't have an identity in AWS yet, how do you, you know, how do you authenticate yourself to get some credentials for this role? Um, so mostly it's going through SAML IDPs for humans and OpenID Connect IDPs for machines. So the, the SAML flow is you know, pretty usual. So you are a human, you go to your Azure AD, to your Okta, your Google Workspace, uh, you get back a SAML assertion or something of the kind, and then you can use the AWS API to exchange this token for actual AWS credentials. Now, what we're interested in today is basically this thing, but for CI-CD pipelines. Um, so again, we have something like this. We have maybe a Terraform or something like this that needs to deploy to AWS, and we don't want any IAM user access keys because they are bad, and they will get us hacked. So if we don't have access keys, we cannot leak uh, keys, right? So what we want to do is to use this JSON web token that gives an identity to our pipeline um, and exchange it for AWS credentials. 
So there's a, a pretty well documented way of doing that, uh, which has been released in 2021. And um, the way you do it is you set your role trust policy to something like this. So on the top, you see that we say, I want to trust this OpenID Connect provider. And on the bottom, we say, if the GWT is properly signed, I want to restrict that to only uh, these GWT subjects. And you see here that you have the org name and the repository name. Then the manual flow is from your GitHub action, you're going to uh, get back a JSON web token. So if you decode it, you will see it contains the right subject, the right issuer. And then you can exchange that using uh, this API call, assume role with web identity. And it's a complicated name, but basically you're just giving a GWT to AWS and getting back some credentials. And these credentials, you can then just put it in, in your console, um, in your terminal, sorry, and use that. That's the manual flow, but in reality, people use uh, you know, standard GitHub actions like that, where you just give it the role name, and it does this flow for you. So that's the context. I wouldn't be here if everything was right, so uh, what could go wrong? Um, a few things. So that's the, the normal trust policy. Again, you just have a condition on the subject that says, I want to allow only CI pipelines from this organization, this repo, this branch. So first thing that can be suboptimal is allowing all the branches because maybe your main branch is doing a, a production deployment and you don't want all your feature branches to be able to get these credentials. But you know, that's probably fine in most cases. Um, maybe you have a wildcard like that that says any repo in my organization can take credentials for that role, which starts to be not great, but you know, maybe it's, it's fine. And then if you just remove this forward slash, it starts to be bad because I can just create a, an organization called Datadog Hello and then I can assume this role. And then, you know, again, uh, if you just push the wildcard, any CI pipeline can do it. If you just remove it, similarly. So again, if you have a vulnerable trust policy, it means that any GitHub action in the world can assume your role. Um, and typically, I think we all know that CI/CD roles tend to be privileged, at least mine are, um, and they have, you know, some access to the environment. So if I'm able to assume this role, I get the credentials, and I can directly access the AWS environment. Now, that's the theoretical misconfiguration. What do we do, like how do we prove that this is actually an issue? Uh, because that's on us. So the first thing is we need the, the role ARNS. So ARNS is the Amazon resource name, which is just the uh, role um, name and the account ID. So it's quite easy. We can just use the GitHub search or services like SourceGraph. And we see here that if I give it um, a regex and the path, it will give me 1.6k results. There are a few duplicates, but still it's a few hundreds. As a second step, you can create your own GitHub action. So I just created a private GitHub repo with a GitHub action in it. Um, I run this curl in it to get back the JSON web token. You can then extract it and take it on your laptop or on anywhere you want. And then you can just loop and you do, you know, for any of these roles, um, can you use STS assume role with web identity? Do you get credentials back? Yes, no. So we automated this collision. We run that uh, for a few hundreds of roles, and we found quite a lot that was vulnerable, uh, which gave us back some AWS credentials, as you can see uh, in this case. We did report that responsibly. Sometimes it's quite hard because you are looking at a GitHub org that doesn't have any name or like not any named individual, not any email. So sometimes it's very hard, sometimes it's very easy. Now, I want to stop on a, a pretty interesting case that we found, um, which is interesting in terms of impact, but also in terms of root cause. So we compromise the credentials for one role. We put that in our uh, environment variables, and we see that it's called GitHub Action Mirror Repose Role. And if you Google this, uh, this role, you see that it belongs to a GovUK repo that says it's the Terraform automation for Kubernetes clusters that host gov.uk. Obviously, that looks uh, quite interesting. So if you dive a bit into it, you will see in the pipeline that it's using uh, code commit. And it's mirroring all the private repositories from the GovUK org back to, to code commit. So even though we don't know the names of these repos, uh, there are some references in the readme. So this is the public readme that talks about this private repo, GovUK AWS data, which sounds interesting. Um, so what we did is just we went to the AWS docs, we 
basically say, okay, how do I use code commit to, to clone a repo? We did that. And well, it did work. Um, so we were able to clone that repo and to access what was in there, which obviously is supposed to be private and not be public. Interestingly enough, uh, so since the, the pipeline had git pull and git push access, it means that an attacker would have been able to push some Terraform files to this repo as well and to backdoor it. So we did report it to the, to the UK government. Uh, the response was quite impressive. 26 hours from report to fix. Um, so it was a great relationship. They were very easy to work with. Um, so if you do find something, feel free to, to report it to them. Now, I want to stop a bit on the root cause because this one is interesting. So that's the actual vulnerable trust policy that was defined with Terraform. Does anyone see something in there that looks wrong? To me, this looks fine. And I took like half an hour to figure out what was wrong. Um, so I'll give it away. There are actually duplicated JSON keys in there. And if you look at the JSON spec, that's not valid JSON. So how the parser is going to handle that is undefined, basically. And uh, what Terraform does is just says, well, I'm going to just take the last value that you defined, which means that this policy is, with Terraform, equivalent to this one, which is insecure, because it doesn't have any condition on the GWT subject. Um, so after we reported that, HashiCorp released a, a security bulletin saying basically, well, we knew about that, but you know, there are some security implications that maybe uh, we didn't think through, but it's not something that can be easily modified. At least, we're aware. Uh, they did release some improvements to the Terraform AWS provider. So the AWS IAM policy resource now checks if you have duplicated JSON keys in the string before passing it. And if you do, it will tell you that it doesn't want to, to, to create it, which is a pretty good one. They also sent an email, so no, AWS also sent an email to customers that had, uh, who had vulnerable roles. They implemented a warning in the AWS console if, if you had like an insecure condition. And they changed the API for create role and update role policy to say, if there is a vulnerable policy, we, we just block the request. So that's great. Um, it doesn't work all the time. For instance, if you use repo colon star, it doesn't block it. Um, so you know it's it's good, it's going to help, but things are still going to be vulnerable to some extent. And the previously created roles are, you know, nobody has nuked them automatically, so um, they might still be there. Now a few tips more on the first on the defensive side, and then for for pen testers. Um, this is a talk about misconfigurations in OIDC authentication, but it's still highly worth it. I don't want to give a message that because it can be misconfigured, we shouldn't use it. So if you are, if you are using CI CD pipelines, use OIDC authentication. It's going to be much better than IAM users. It's easier to configure, more secure, uh, et cetera. It's quite easy to check in your account if you have any, any role that, that is used by GitHub Actions. Uh, so there's a one-liner with AWS CLI. And from there, you can just either manually look at the trust policies, either there is a tool that, uh, Resonate released that looks at these this, uh, this trust policies and tells you if something is insecure. If you have a chance of using GitHub Enterprise, GitHub Enterprise Cloud, you can also turn on something to get a custom OIDC provider for your org. So in which case you see that the URL is different, the signing key is going to be different, which means that even if you mess up your IAM trust policy, um, a pipeline outside of your org won't be able to get credentials for this role. So it's a good guardrail, uh, but it's only for GitHub Enterprise Cloud customers. It's actually quite easy also to detect exploitation or exploitation attempts using uh, CloudTrail. So if you look at assume role with web identity events, and you filter out things that have user identity .username starting with your GitHub org name, you will find anyone that tries to assume some of your roles uh, while being outside of your GitHub org. So I think that's a quick win um, to detect early attempts of exploitations or successful one. Now, if you're a pen tester, I would say that it's interesting to just like figure out, is your target using GitHub Actions? Um, there are also some abuse vectors through pull requests. So sometimes if you open a pull request and you change the CI code, you might be able to, to steal the credentials from there. 
And there are you know, some methodologies that, that can be combined with that. So typically, if you find an S3 bucket, there's a way to get the AWS account ID from that, whether the bucket is public or private. And S3 bucket names are everywhere. Like they are in CNAME, DNS things, in J J J JavaScript code, in passive DNS, everywhere. And from there, you can also perform um, unauthenticated enumeration. So if you have a word list of IAM role names, you can say, does this role exist in this account? Yes, no. Um, and from there, you know, it's quite easy to, to build a word list for role names like CI, CD, GitHub Actions, CI, and figure out if one of them is vulnerable. So I think that can be a pretty realistic and efficient me methodology. We only talked about AWS, but uh, the same goes for Azure AD, Entry ID, and Google Cloud. So in Azure AD, when you create an app registration, you can go to the federated uh, credentials tab, and you can add kind of this same trust policy. It's a bit harder to misconfigure. I'm not even sure if you can still misconfigure it, uh, but it's the same principle. You have uh, an API, an Azure API that you can use to exchange a GWT for Azure credentials. Same for Google Cloud, it's called Workload Identity Federation. It's the same mechanism as they use for um, authenticated Kubernetes pod in Google Cloud. So to wrap up, um, it's, it is better to use o OADC KLS authentication rather than IAM users. It can be misconfigured, so it's important to watch out for um, lax trust policies and have guardrails if we can if we can have them. And um, we saw that things are getting better for the new roles, but the old roles are still out there, so I think that's a, a call for action to go and find them. Thank you. The slides are going to be up here, so if you want to download them, feel free. Thank you. And I think we have three minutes for Q&A, so if you have any question, please uh, shout, otherwise I will be here. Thank you.